Please see the PowerPoint to review key features of a parabola such as x-intercepts, y-intercepts, line asymmetry, sometimes known as the axis asymmetry. Um, and in the PowerPoint, some key things to write down in your notes is that all parabolas contain y-intercepts, but parabolas can have two intercepts, one intercept, or no x-intercepts. Two x-intercepts, one x-intercept, or no x-intercepts. And x-intercepts may also be referred to as real solutions. All right, and again, refer to the PowerPoint for that. I'm going to go through mini lesson one and two at this time. <clears throat> so in this parabola, we have a vertex, and it appears to be located at two, three. <clears throat> the domain, and we're going to look at the x values for the domain. So we're going to start at the minimum x value and move over to the maximum. So we're always going to go from left to right for the domain. So this is moving up at an angle, and that's because it's being pulled to the left at the same time as it's being pulled up. And there's no limit how far it's going to the left, based on the symbol of this arrow. Since there's no limit how far it goes to the left, we represent it with a negative infinity. On the right-hand side, it's also being pulled to the right at the same time it's being pulled up, and that's why it's moving up at a diagonal. There's no limit how far it moves to the right, and we represent that with a positive infinity. Again, we do have, just like you learned in Unit 1, we do have parentheses on both ends here. We can't touch an infinity, negative or positive. <coughs> For the range, <coughs> just like the domain, where we go from left to right because minimum values to maximum values, we'll do the same for the range. We'll start at the bottom, the minimum values, and we'll move upwards. So the first value we see is right here. It's the minimum value of this parabola. It occurs at the vertex. Ranges describe y values, and this y value is 3. And there's no limit how high it goes, so we represent that with a positive infinity. We can't touch infinity. 3 is part of this, and the y value 3 is contained on this function. So we put a bracket in front of the 3. That appears to be like a negative, but it's just a messy bracket. Second example. This time we have a parabola that opens downward. We have a vertex at 1, 2, at negative 2, negative 1. Again, on the left and right are going moving down at an angle. It's being pulled down while it goes to the left and down as it goes to the right. And so there's no limit how far it moves to the right. We represent that with a negative infinity. And there's no limit how far it moves to the right, excuse me, no limit how far it moves to the left or to the right. We can't touch the infinity symbol, so we leave it with parentheses on both sides. For the range, just like we went from left to right, minimum to maximum for the domain, we're going to go minimum to maximum for the range. So the minimum is down here. There's no limit how far down it goes. We represent it with a negative infinity, and it goes up as high as this value. And this y value, y value because we're working with range, is negative 1. Negative 1 is part of this function as a y value, so we put a bracket in that place. Last practice problem for this mini lesson. Again, we're being pulled to the left as it goes up and to the right as it goes up. So the vertex for this problem is negative 5, 3, and there's no limit how far it goes to the right or to the left, to the left or to the right, no limit, represented with a negative infinity and positive. We'll do increasing and decreasing tomorrow for the range, because we're going to go from minimums to maximums for domain and minimums to maximum for range. The lowest value occurs right here, and it has a y value of 3. The y value of 3 is part of the function, so we're going to put a bracket around it. We can actually touch it. And there's no limit how high it goes. We go positive infinity. The last three problems we did, the learning objective for those problems would be to identify the domain and range 
of a quadratic function in interval notation. The next mini lesson is to identify the end behavior, and this is brand new. So when I first teach this, I put a y instead of f of x, so there's no confusion here, and I put boxes in place. Depending on the teacher or the material you see, sometimes the x's are in front, sometimes the x's are in back. So we are always going to put a negative infinity first and a positive infinity second. What this means is as you look to the left of the graph, so you go to the very far left, somewhere over here, what's happening to our function? And you're going to have three options. The function is going to be going up continuously, it's going to be going down continuously, or it may be just hanging out at one number and just kind of scooting by there. Well, with problems, we know they're both going to be going down or both going to be going up for quadratic functions. In this case, as you move to the left, as x's go to negative infinity, as you go to the left, our function is heading downward. And we represent going down with negative infinity. As we go to the right, What's happening? Our function again is going down at the end, end behavior, negative infinity. In the past, in the past, I've had students ask, can I use the end behaviors for y to both be negative? And you can, you don't have to have one positive and one negative. Okay, our last one. I forgot to do the vertex of the last one, the vertex of the last problem um, was positive 4, positive 1. Okay, vertex for this problem is going to be negative 4, negative 3. And I'm going to put my boxes here. Not necessary once you catch on to this, but for most students it helps just to have an area. We always start by putting a negative infinity and positive infinity in this place. Okay, so let's read this. As I go to the left for the x's, so over here, as I go to the left for the x's, what's happening? Is my graph headed up or headed down? In this case, it is going upward, so we represent that with a positive infinity. And as I move to the right, what's happening? To the far right, the end behavior is also going up. 